Boa tarde, members of parliament, ministers, the mayor of Ponte de Sor, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you like so much for inviting Portugal me to join Air you today. For inviting me today. Unfortunately, I'm unable to make it physically, as I need to be in Brussels for various parliamentary meetings. My name is Jan Christoph Oetjen. I'm a German member of the European Parliament, associated to the liberal centrist Renew Europe Group and vice chair of the Committee on Transport and Tourism. I would like today to discuss the importance of the single European Sky dossier. As most of you will know, this piece of legislation has been discussed for over a decade and systematically watered down for various reasons. We are currently in negotiations with the European Council and the European Commission to make progress in realizing a true single European sky. Before I start explaining why I'm convinced that we need a strong single European sky, let me please say a few words on the importance of aviation for Portugal. Aviation keeps people connected and provides the international access that Portugal needs for economic growth, business and tourism. Portugal is a major global trading nation and one of Europe's most popular tourist destinations with around 27 million international tourists visiting in 2019. In addition to tourism, other key industries such as aeronautical, space and defense, shared services, centers and outsourcing and infrastructure like water and energy are key sectors to the Portuguese economy and all benefit directly from Portugal's aviation connectivity and competitiveness. But we also know that many challenges are ahead of us. Capacity issues with new entrants such as unmanned aerial vehicles, Experts say that we will be facing a very congested airspace, making it difficult to arrive on time and destination. Safety issues for the same reasons. But the most burning issue will certainly be the environmental one. The good point here is that the Single European Sky core objectives are addressing this challenge. An implementing, implemented Single European Sky would allow the following. An improvement in safety performance by a factor of 10. Greater capacity and fewer delays giving a 245 billion euro boost to Europe's GDP and a million extra jobs annually from 2035. A 6% cut in EU aviation emissions supporting the European Green Deal. Aviation needs to decarbonize itself. Everyone agrees with that. I have taken note and welcomed the fact that last week global airlines have committed to reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050. But I also noted that IATA's Director General, Willy Walsh, said, airlines do not have a clear solution in the short term. As a shadow rapporteur of the single European Sky dossier, I don't have a magic solution for you. But what I want to do now, according to uh, Eurocontrol data, compared to optimal trajectories, current trajectories of all flights controlled in the European region in 2019, entail an additional 6% in CO2 emissions. This corresponds to 11.6 million tons of CO2 emissions that could have been avoided. So, said differently, airlines are forced to emit more CO2 than necessary because we don't have a single European sky. Sustainable aviation is dependent on the performance of airspace and ATM to meet the increasing demand for air travel and unmanned drones. Concerns about aviation's environmental impact is growing and the sector is under increasing pressure to tackle its emissions. I'm absolutely convinced that the European Union needs regulatory changes that promote a flight-efficient ATM system that will support the measures outlined in the European Green Deal and reduce aviation emissions. The regulatory framework for new market entrants and in terms of air mobility needs to be specified and further developed. In that context, in September of 2020, the European Commission suggested to reopen the file in proposing an update to the so-called Single European Sky 2 Plus package. Portugal, which has been holding the rotating presidency of the Council during the first semester of 2021, has been instrumental in trying to find consensus among the various member states and pulled together the Council position that was found early June. And would like to thank you for that. In parallel, the European Parliament in the Transport and Tourism Committee, so my committee, worked very hard with more than 700 amendments to adopt an ambitious position late June. 
Months after the European Commission released its single European Sky legislative proposal, technical meetings and trilogue negotiations um, started on July the 14th. As expected, with such divergent views between the European Parliament and the Council, the first technical meeting was difficult and no compromise was found. Indeed, it's not a secret for the people here that the Council and the European Parliament have very divergent views on key aspects of the dossier. Let me give you a few examples. While the European Parliament clearly expresses its support for the creation of a strong, skilled and independent European and national economic regulators, the Council opposed the fact that national supervisory authorities should be kept independent from any airspace navigation providers in organizational, hierarchical and decision-making terms, in particular by avoiding conflicts of interest with those service providers from any NSP. Member States have pushed back on the idea to establish an independent economic regulator that could set binding performance targets to ANSPs. I think this is simply not acceptable. Let me be clear. It is the one remaining monopoly industry that today does not have an independent regulator. The establishment of an independent European economic regulator for air navigation charges that will define the targets to be achieved the environmental ones, the capacity and the delay ones, oversees progress and determines binding financial corrective actions is fundamental to the success of the SES. Regarding the strengthening of the power of the network manager, while the European Parliament agreed on the fact to empower further an independent network manager who would be able to optimize the airspace design and airspace structures to manage extra air traffic control capacity in the network, and to coordinate and support in case of network crisis, as this was the case during the 2018-19 summer season, the Council opposed that idea, mostly for sovereignty issues. It can't go on like that, since I fear that our respective positions will be hard to reconcile. I want to highlight that four states, Finland, Spain, Malta and Ireland, have published a joint statement on the SES2+, showing a willingness to make some concrete progress at international neg negotiations, known as trilogue level. It's evident that refusing to make a step in that direction while asking airlines to tackle their emissions is a paradox. Member states have to participate in the effort of reducing CO2 emissions. Although I have the feeling we have all ran a marathon since September 2020, we are now in the final sprint as we expect this file to be adopted under the French presidency of the Council during the first semester of 2022. Fingers crossed. I sincerely hope other member states will follow the constructive approach led by Finland, Ireland, Spain and Malta. I would encourage Portugal, which wasn't in a position to have a strong stance on this because of its presidency, to make its voice heard and to join this group to allow an acceptable compromise for everyone and for the single European sky to finally be adopted and deliver its benefits. I'm at your full disposal so is the rapporteur of the, the file, Mr. Uh, Marian Marinescu, should you need to discuss further. Together with uh, Marian Marinescu and Bogoslav Liberatsky, we are working on a truly single European sky and unified European air management, creating a new airspace architecture based on efficiency and not on borders. Unfortunately, the position adopted by the Council is nationalistic. Therefore, we urge Member States to fly high so we, so we can finally address the problem of its cost, fragmentation and emissions. We will continue the negotiations in trilogue and I'm counting on all sides that a constructive way of working will lead to a successful completion of the file and a real single European sky. I wish you all a successful event. Obrigado and see you soon.